Teach your children three things Love for your prophet Love for his family Love for Quran reciters Teach your children three things Love for your prophet Love for his family Love for Quran reciters الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear respected viewers of Madani Channel We welcome you in our program Parenting Skills If you want to better upbring your children If you want that your child's behavior is Battily managed, his anger is controlled, and other challenges that you are facing. Then, Alhamdulillah, this program will definitely benefit you. We have got a professional advisor, Doctor Zinek Attari, with us. Inshallah, we'll go towards him and we'll start this program with some of the case studies we have got. And we had actually conducted a public survey before starting this program, and we received a very good response from your end. And Alhamdulillah, some parents they have written to us what problem. they are facing and we have selected those cases in our programs so let's go towards our professional advisor dr zirak attari assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so how are you doing alhamdulillah rabbil alameen ala kulli al how are you rizwan bhai i'm good alhamdulillah thank you so much once again you've given your precious time to us now some uh, parents they have written to us And mashallah, very uh, positive response we got when we were starting this program. We've got few cases in front of us, and uh, the very first case in today's this episode, I would like to share with you and need your professional advice on that. That there's a boy, ten years of the age, and uh, he's not suffering from any physical health or mental health. He's not taking any regular medication, and there's no family history either. And uh, Actually, what the parents they are facing problem of behavioral issue, and uh, what we have received in detail that let me read that to you. Behavioral problem. Actually, I have four sons: first ten years old, and second nine years. They play together and fight with each other when they argue. Then they get angry and annoyed, use silly words and misbehave. This is what they are facing. a challenge as far as the strategies they have adopted to solve this problem uh, it says i ban them from gifts and games sometimes i get angry and shout at them this is the approach they are adopting to sort this issue out we lost up your professional advice on this jazakallah khair once again i'm very grateful to all the parents and guardians who actually taken time out to respond to our survey it's uh, not easy to share your personal problems or challenges that you face in terms of your children yes it is completely anonymous but i am still grateful to those parents so in this case where we have got uh, two boys 10 and 9 boys can be quite handful especially at this age and uh, clearly looks like there is a sibling rivalry Uh, between these two children for the viewers of madni channel what is sibling rivalry it's absolutely natural phenomenon that when you have two children whether they are uh, two boys or two girls or boys and the girl one gets jealous they they basically they there is a competition between the two yeah. so they what one gets the other has to get it as well yeah Uh, and if one doesn't get the other gets it then it's a problem there are problems in every you know there are issues or there are fights or there are battles whether it is toys whether it is gadgets whether it is screen time whether it is food time whether it is whatever and i have to say this is natural part of growing that's what we have been seeing over the last few years and so forth and this is called sibling rivalry okay but this <coughs> can really be a very difficult situation for the parents agree if it happens here and there when it's not an issue but if it's happening every day on every little thing then uh, clearly parents can get very upset and uh, if you look at it um, you know from the strategy's point of view what the parent is doing here is banning them from gifts and games and then getting angry and shouting yeah so as i said that this is a normal part and parcel of growing so once these children they are teenagers and they they, they turn into adults they will actually uh, you know this this will go away 
Yeah. So it's not that if they are fighting now and they will carry on fighting, but once they become adult and their brain matures, uh, they, the chances are that they will actually be good brother and sister or good siblings. But what the parents end up doing it is, for example, in this case, I can only comment on what the information I've received. Yeah. And the information Absolutely. I've received is that they get banned from gifts, they get banned from games, so we can say um, that uh, uh, their privilege activities, and then the parents are getting angry and shouting. None of this is going to help. Definitely. The first thing that is going to help is understanding that this is natural part of growing. The second thing that is going to help is sit with the children and try to set boundaries. But actually, also, I've seen sometimes in some um, cultures, right, they shout and want to stop shouting. And they hit to stop crying. What is this? It's Who hits the parents? Parents. Parents hit the children. To stop crying. For the children, for the children to stop crying. How is it possible? <laughs> yeah, obviously, what happens is that the parents then get emotional. Yeah. And when they are angry, then obviously they can't use their emotional intelligence. True. Okay, because when you are angry, you can't actually assess the situation fully. So you will you will end up with a, a response which is a negative. That's what I'm saying. How is it yeah. possible? You are responding to the situation. You want that other person to stop shouting, but you are shouting yourself. Exactly. So it's counterproductive and you are trying to get rid of a negative behavior by using a True. negative behavior yourself, which in essence, all the children are going to do is copy your behavior. Sure. So that makes it worse. So, as I said, the option one is accept that, you know, this is natural part of growing and it will actually uh, go away eventually. The second thing is obviously setting boundaries with these children. So, how can you set boundaries? Yeah. It is absolutely crucial that parents have rules and regulations in their home. And uh, when setting boundaries, so for example, these two brothers, they are fighting with each other. It's not going to suddenly drop out and next day they will all be fine. No. They will have to adopt a stepwise approach if they are purely going to set in the rules in terms of this sibling rivalry or the fights that is happening. And basically what they need to do is let's assume that they are fighting, they have five fights in a day. Okay. The parents could actually say, okay, look, you know, we want you to reduce this fighting. Okay. If in the next week you try to fight less than before, okay. so if five fights a day, then four fights a day. You're not asking them to have four <laughs> fights, but you, do, but you want them to have less fights okay. than previously for one week. And if they achieve it for the whole week, they get reward yeah. for the improvement in their behavior. That has to be very clear. Right. right. Yes, they are still fighting, but it is an improvement in their behavior. So that way you can gradually reduce the frequency of the fights that is happening. And then you can set in the rules and regulations. And many times what happens is that if parents, well, now Alhamdulillah, we are all Muslims. Mm -hmm. And we children, they, they tend to blame parents uh, that they are unfair. Or you've given him that and you've not given me this, you treated him nicely, you're not treating me nicely, and so and so forth. So they need to teach to the children that, look, it is not easy to be a parent. So in terms of setting the boundaries, as I said, that take it gradual. Okay. Set rewards for good behavior. These children who are fighting, they're not fighting all the time. Yeah, true. There are times when they are behaving well. So rather than, I mean, what, one strategy is that you keep punishing the bad behavior and all it is going to do is repress them. Mm -hmm. And when they are older, they will rebel. Yeah. The other approach is, okay, where you do need to apply sanctions, you apply the sanctions. Where they break the rules, they don't stick to the rules. But if they do, you apply the sanctions, but those sanctions should be agreed in advance with the child. Okay. So not having screen time for half an hour or not at all for that particular day. And you have to reason with the children in advance when you're not angry and when they're not angry. Okay. So when you apply a sanction to them for not following the rule, children know 
where they can't challenge it. Right. Okay. And that's important why you agree the sanctions and they will also as well. learn. And they also learn. And rather than punishing, then the other thing is that you note down their positive behavior, sure. their good behavior, and you actually start rewarding that good behavior. Okay. So for example, you could use star charts. Let's say that they are uh, 9 and 10. So if they pray their namaz, yeah, they will get one star. Okay. okay, and you need to set a goal okay. that you know if you get five stars, then you will be rewarded with something. Individual star is a reward, but ultimately, at the end of whatever number of stars, whether it initially keep these numbers low. So, for when you get five stars, then basically you will get a reward, okay. another reward on top of it, whether it is a toy or whether it is a book whether it is something else that they want, but it shouldn't be expensive. So, and children need to know that what good behavior they need to demonstrate to get a star. That's again very clear. Okay. And so, in essence, what you're doing is you are rewarding their good behavior. Now, what you can say is you can use the same stars to, to sanction the bad behavior. You can then, after one week, you can say, okay, this week, we were all good behavior, star for a good behavior. This week, yes, star for a good behavior. But if you do this and this bad behavior, we will remove a star. You are not punishing them. You are not giving any other sanction. But this removal of a star, they now it's going to delay their journey to that other reward that they're going to get. True. So this can be very effective if it is used properly, properly. Mm -hmm. and consistently. Okay. And don't let children overtake. Stars remain with the parents, not with the children whenever they need and they can put one up. But it is crucial that you set the rules and regulations. For these good behaviors, you earn a star. For these bad behaviors, you remove a star. So it's really a learning experience, mashallah, with you. But uh, how can we use these rewards and um, the sanctions? But, uh, and but let me just add to please. this is that the rewarding a good behavior gives you a far better outcome Masha. than actually punishing a bad behavior. I'm not saying do not punish the bad behavior. What I'm saying is that there, there are only two. By keeping rewarding the good behavior, you are improving your relationship with the child. Mm -hmm. He is more likely to listen to you. And once he starts listening to you, now you can actually first develop that behavior, which is why I said in the first week or two weeks, don't mention or removing the star on a bad behavior. Just give them stars on a good behavior. And when they are doing in the one week or two weeks, you can say, now, Yes, you will get a star on a good behavior, but for this and this bad behavior, we will remove a star. And it's important that at the end of five stars or ten stars, they have an additional reward that they are happy about as well. So these rewards may need to be discussed as well. So what do you want? So set a reward and hopefully by adopting this strategy, then what would happen is that there will be more good behavior. I would not expect in this case for this sibling rivalry to completely go away at this age. Okay. They will still be fighting with each other on little things. But as parents, you can the, the important thing is trying to reduce the frequency. It will never go to zero. Yeah. Because if I went back and looked at my own childhood, if I was a brother or a sister or whatever, obviously it's, it means in the all, all of the parents are reflecting, looking back. Yeah. Then how much fights there were, okay, not in every single family, but majority of the children, they, there was sibling rivalry between them. But now that they've grown up, that sibling rivalry hasn't had any negative effect on your current life. MashaAllah. Very good. Not another important uh, factor comes that, like when uh, the dad comes home, right? And the the mom, she starts talking about the children, okay? She did not do nothing. She didn't clean. She didn't wash up. She, she never helped me. So all the complaint list is handed over to the dad. But uh, Nigani Shura was mentioning a beautiful point that why not we also mention the good things she has done or the good things he has done. 
So, what would you say on to this, please? No, definitely very, uh, very sort of uh, important point. Whether it is the dad or the mum, I mean, uh, clearly there are situations when the mum may be out of the home and the dad's temporarily, um, you know, Looking with the up. children. And when the mum comes back, and then obviously the dad may be angry, or oh, hey, they did this and they did that. Uh, definitely, what happens is that. The children, they will be doing positive things and they will be doing negative, negative things. Negative from my mindset point of view. Because I understand that this may be negative, but the child doesn't understand that this is negative. True. Part of problem is that we don't explain to them properly that what is acceptable and what is not, not acceptable. acceptable. And uh, when they do something unacceptable, what we do is immediately, without explaining that this is unacceptable, we immediately go to the punishment. Yeah. We immediately go to the sanction. The child doesn't understand why they are being sanctioned. Okay. So it is important for the parents to first explain <clears throat> what was wrong. Don't punish it for the first time. Don't give them sanction for the first time. Say to them next time, let's say, try for you know this not to happen. By the same time, appreciation is also very important and rewarding factor is very important too. As a general rule of thumb, give reward nine times very and keep the sanction one out of ten. Sure. Because if you are giving sanction too frequently, it is going to lose its impact. And very soon the child is going to realize, well, okay, then that's fine. I mean, I get shouted at, that's no problem. Anyway, yeah. You know, and, and it affects the relationship, it affects the self-esteem of the child and you need to limit the sanctions you know, sort of 1 out of 10 and reward them 9 out of 10. MashaAllah, very detailed explanation for this particular case. Let's go towards the next one. And also, another case we've got in front of us is a boy of 5 years old and he's not suffering from any health illness or mental health illness. Is not taking any regular medication. So as far as the problem is concerned, a lot of they've mentioned I have two children, one boy and one girl, mm -hmm. uh, three and five respectively. They are lovely children, mashallah, they've appreciated, it's a good sign. Their mother sometimes shouts at them when they annoy her, which is normal reaction, but sometimes it is too much. Now kids are slowly using the same attitude when they are annoyed. How can I help and play a role to help mother first and children too in this young age? As far as uh, the, the strategies they have adopted, it says that I've explained mum several times and also children gently but no results. And uh, are there any family members who have physical mental health problems? Uh, says yes. If yes, so he says a wife, blood pressure and maybe some mental health issues but not sure. So this looks like a concerned father, obviously. He's uh, written on the behalf of the children. He's talking about his uh, wife. Um, now, first of all, I mean, I must say that he's written it very beautifully, mm -hmm. the problem and the issue. And he he's appreciating that his, their, the children are very lovely children. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes as parents, we do tend to remind ourselves that, about the positive things about our children. Mm -hmm. And what he's describing here is obviously uh, the, the mother of the children. The, she ends up shouting sometimes and uh, the children are now copying her behavior. Yeah. And he's obviously tried to explain things and uh, clearly it's not helping. I hope that the mother of the children takes this positively. Mashallah. Now clearly if the husband's thinking there are concerns, it is better to get them checked. Uh, but sometimes what can happen is it's not that, easy, isn't it? yeah, because it's difficult to accept your own sure. shortcoming or weakness, sure. and uh, possibly it may be difficult for the husband to explain things to the wife as well. So go and speak to the GP, okay. and if there is any, you know, it may be just stress, sure. it may be mild depression, it may be some personality traits, okay. But whatever it is, there will be most definitely help available. Very good. And you should be able to get help uh, because what happens is that these children are young, three and five. And if the mother is able to get help, then clearly this, uh, um, you know, the responsibility or the looking after of the children and the family environment will become quite positive and pleasant. But if the mother doesn't get any help, then what would happen is that this will become a burden. 
and because the mother is shouting and the children are copying that behavior then the behavior of the children is going to get to us yes the father is playing his role um, in in a uh, fairly good way but if it is not being effective as he says that no results then clearly we need to do something and i think because the problem is not too bad at the moment it is definitely much more easy to resolve such uh, issues sometimes what happens is that because parenting it doesn't come naturally and it is uh, it is a difficult task but if someone is uh, burdened with additional stress sure. or they are burdened with underlying mental health issues mental health is very common sure. and it is no we shouldn't think negatively or think of it as a a stigma or there shouldn't be any shame associated with it but unfortunately the society has made it look bad so we are here to actually remove those taboos as well true so get the help and there may be sometimes there are parenting courses there are sometimes behavior management courses i mean they could obviously search for a behavior management course these days it's online courses so it is possible that if uh, the father himself tries to do that behavior management course online okay. um, they are fairly cheap and you you can actually do them online he may be able to pick up lots of skills that he can use to actually help his wife as well naturally sure. um so that's uh, th- what my suggestion would be in this particular case the mother getting the right help but the bottom line is shouting will never help for children upbringing is exactly it? is going to further destroy the behavior rather than to fix yeah. dr this is the third one we've got today in our program would like to include that there's a child of 9 years of age and he's a boy and um, he's suffering from asthma and no mental health illness whereas he's taking regular medication inhalers and the problem the parents are facing is rudeness and the strategies they have adopted they've been polite to him they've given extra love and care and uh, the family history as far as is concerned there's no family history whatsoever any problem no. okay now asthma is a fairly common condition with children medical problem where they get breathing difficulties and uh, obviously they need an inhaler uh, now it's not clear that how what's the frequency Uh, of the inhaler is using them on weekly basis or monthly basis or daily basis but clearly asthma is a long term condition okay oh. although some children do tend to grow out of it or it definitely gets symptoms much less uh, but if it is sort of like moderate uh, rather than mild then it can impact significantly on your performance but does it, it have a correlation with rudeness or behavioral issues now this is what i'm trying to come okay. towards now if this is a, if they if he has got moderate sort of symptoms okay. and it is affecting his uh, uh, you know physical health if the physical health is being affected it is going to affect his school it is going to affect his attendance at Obviously. school it is possible that during the winter terms he may be getting more infections and so forth which means more time off school disrupting his social interaction with others and also the taking of the inhalers if let's assume that he's taking it on daily basis then there's a lot of psychological burden on him mm. children they begin to question why am i different yeah true and sometimes he may be taking the inhaler with him at school yeah um so other children may be treating i mean not accepting of that yeah um so usually at school the teachers do try to educate other children as well so these are additional burdens on this child and he may be thinking why am i um, sort of different than others mm-hmm. and they may be blaming parents or whatever and this can sometimes i mean because any long term illness with children they can become quite stressful anxious worried and this can cause behavioral difficulties and rudeness is one of them um and obviously they can get angry or they can get emotional it can reduce their self esteem they may become tearful uh, and and so forth 
and sometimes obviously because if it all depends how the parents are treating that okay. now clearly the parents sometimes can actually uh, let them get away with lots of things so in which case that may be potentially another additional factor okay. and as we you know covered in previous episodes is yes i mean the child has got medical problem long term problem it's having a significant impact on his daily life or daily routine but we still have to be uh, you know firm with the rules and the regulation and the setting up of the boundaries and if the boundaries are not adhered to then applying the sanctions and so forth but at the same time rewarding the good behavior so if he is being rude this has to stop um and the way it can stop is the parents sitting with him and again uh, coming up with the uh, boundaries and rules and the rules can be simply basically you're not you know should not use the swear words or you know whichever way he is being rude or disrespectful and 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 again is is it's all the approach if if i say, for example say if you swear or okay. you be rude will take off your you know screen time okay now he's going to get angry and upset and he's not going to agree to this the other approach which is more positive and you may get more result with this is you saying that if you are not rude today yeah you will be rewarded right or if you are again much less rude over the next week you will be rewarded okay so it's all the wording rather than using if you are rude you will not get this so say if you're not rude you will get this good so is the rewarding the good behavior and defining what is good behavior in this case not swearing or not being rude and also explaining or not the problems he is facing at school due to his uh, health issues yeah so he should understand it isn't yeah. it and and sometimes what happens is that as parents we can be quite harsh on children children coming from the school they are upset now if yeah. i can see the child is upset ask him what's the reason and gently ask him sit with him the child may not want to speak at that particular time yeah. say okay well you may not be uh, you know ready to or comfortable to speak about it we'll talk about it later yes. when the child is feeling normal then approach him again yeah. so what is it that is upsetting you yeah. now the child thinks that the parents on my side Yeah. so they will share their emotions good once your child is beginning to share their emotions with you you have actually won every battle good because now the child is developing a trust in you whereas on the other hand the child is upset why are you upset you are upset again mm -hmm. you know the child say oh so and so child is bullying me uh, well then you know why don't you bully him back why don't you hit him back don't you have the courage you know you, you are not sort of this and you know and in It's essence what's positive. happened is rather than being positive you've all gone negative mm -hmm. and you you're losing the trust and you've lost every battle true and this will affect your trust with the child so in in a nutshell basically any long term medical health problem has psychological mm -hmm. consequences which can present easily in behavioral difficulties so the parents need to be understanding and supporting the emotional and physical needs of their child mashallah but dear respected viewers of madani chill beautiful reply we need to uh, develop a friendship we need to develop a relationship with our children we need to listen to them we need to talk to them we need to find out the bottom line we need to find out the root cause what is affecting their behavior why they are being rude what's the problem uh, where it is starting from and then we like to try and resolve it we need to try and address it this is the basic bottom um mashallah point which dr sab has addressed i hope this program must have benefited you inshallah we'll come back with another beautiful episode with few other responses keep watching madani channel assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh teach your children three things love for your prophet love for his family love for quran recite teach your children three things love for your prophet love for his family love for quran recite
Insider.